All right, so case number four is a 35-year-old um, female with a vulvar lesion. This is actually an example of a deep angiomyxoma, also known as a so-called aggressive angiomyxoma. And the name aggressive probably isn't the best name because these are not like aggressive malignancies. They are deep and they are interwoven oftentimes in the soft tissue of the pelvis under, underneath the vulva, around the vagina, around the uterus. And because of that, they're really hard to remove and they tend to continue to grow and they are problematic because of local, local growth but they are not malignant uh, in the classic sense of the word. So um, they tend to have, even though the name says angiomyxoma, I, and I've only seen a handful of these, to me they often look almost more like edema in the background. It's like pale, but it's not really quite the blue of like real myxoid stuff. Um, and then the other things that can help you here is you can have fat intermingled in them, and you also have vessels of varying size. You'll run everything from little tiny vessels like down here to bigger dilated ones, all the way up to like thick walled kind of muscular looking vessels and everything in between. So they have this wide range of vascular thickness and they have kind of variable, you know, cellularity, like low cellularity to very low cellularity. And um, the one other thing here, let me see if I can find a good area with it. And Mark Edgar taught me this, that you get in the, out here in the midst of these spindle cells, you get these little thin, elongated like smooth muscle cells see this like little thin spindle cell that's got a little pink bundle running along so these little smooth muscle cells are long and very thin and they're kind of scattered in the middle of this background of bland spindle cells myxoid edematous background and collagen and a lot of times you'll see those little muscle cells kind of branching off around the outside of a blood vessel and kind of kind of stretching out into the middle space in between the vessels and so it's a very subtle kind of clue, but it so far has worked out pretty well for me ever since Mark uh, taught that clue to me. And I thought that was pretty nice. You can kind of see one here. See this guy? It's kind of coming right off the wall of the vessel and kind of stretching out away into the soft tissue. Definitely it is a very subtle finding. And I guess I should have put it up there. That's a really nice one. You can see the same thing again. Here's a vessel and then the little thin smooth muscle cells stretching away from it. So these will be oftentimes ER and PR positive, but many of the stromal kind of tumors in the in and near the genital tract have that same that same kind of appearance. Or, I'm sorry, that same kind of staining can express ER and PR. So the stains alone are not always going to, to solve a problem for you there. So these are quite rare. And the one thing that helps me a lot is you can see other things with a similar appearance like uh, fibroepithelial stromal polyps of the vulva. Sometimes you can see areas that look a little like this in angiomyofibroblastoma of the vulva. I feel like all of those stromal tumors that occur in the female genital tract have some overlapping features. The biggest thing that helps me here is these are big, deep tumors. So if you have a small polyp on the vulva, on the labia, with no mass underneath it, it's not this. These are gonna be large, deep masses usually. If I have any doubt, like, see, look, this is a huge piece of tissue here. This because this was part of, like, I think a 15 or 20 centimeter mass that was resected, stretched all the way from the vulva all the way up around the side of the uterus and pushed into, like, the, you know, up towards the peritoneal cavity. So um, it was a, a quite a large, a quite a large lesion. So anyway, the, I think that's the biggest thing for me is if I have any doubt, I want, I'll tell the clinician, please do imaging studies to see if there's a mass underneath this. And if it's small, then it's probably not a deep angiomyxoma. And again, my experience with these is relatively limited. I've only seen a few of them, so... Certainly, I'm not uh, the world's expert on that.